So I personally like to separate my personal relationships from my professional relationships because I can walk away from the professional ones. The personal ones, you can never escape them. Thanks, Chris. My name is Brendan Shanley. I have a business associate who I work with who's based in Anchorage. We've been working together for about five years now. The idea and questions of having a formalized partnership uh, has been a question of ours for a while. If you have any advice on, on to whether or not the benefits, uh, advantages or disadvantages okay. to help us continue to have that conversation. Take this with a giant bulldozer scoop of salt, okay? I'm very biased when it comes to partnerships because I've tried three times. I've not made it work, mostly because of my own personality, okay? So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about personality so you can map it to see if this advice should even be listened to. First part is I work like an animal. Like I work all the time. And not only do I work, I work smart, I work super efficiently, so that means my output usually is four times somebody else. So what happens inevitably is comparison. What are you doing, what am I doing? And it's unrealistic for me to expect somebody to be that focused and that efficient and that productive. So after a while, resentment builds. Number two, I have clear vision, but I'm loose on the tactics. And I move really fast, like I said before. And so it can be at breakneck speed and you can get whiplash. You really can. I thought you said we're doing this. Nope, I'm doing that because it didn't work. I'm not committed to going down that path if it doesn't work. I let the feedback, the metrics tell me if this is working. And so that creates problems for everybody, okay? And I think really, really big. I think so big that if you actually heard me tell you what's in my head, you would walk away from this table like, that is one crazy mofo. You would think that. You would think, what an arrogant, cocky, no, I don't think so. I wish more of we, us were, right? So when I tell you my vision, you get scared. And I don't have time to convince you. I don't have time for you to drag me back. I don't want you to dampen my enthusiasm with your dogma. And this happens all the time. So when I say we should do this, and you're like, no, oh, that's not going to work. I'm like, now i got to have a conversation with you and try to convince you. Right? And when I say I want to change, you're like, well, let's write the four-year business plan. Let's get a board of advisors. Are you kidding me? I don't want to do that. I move. And it's scary for a lot of people. So for me... The three partnerships that I've had have all failed. And it almost failed like from the minute we said, let's do it. Okay? So, pros and cons. Uh, the pro, I'll go first because it's short. The pro is you feel somebody else does something that you don't do. Let's say somebody else's sales or production or animation or design. And you feel like it's a good partnership, right? And this is how, why most creatives team up with a business person because that works well. So they think. When you feel like you want to partner, realize there's a hole inside of you that you feel. It's like the Shel Silverstein book, The Missing Piece. Heidi ho, Heidi ho, here I go. I, wait, have you seen my missing piece? So you feel like somebody is going to feel that. And this works with all kinds of human dynamics and relationships, like why you met your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband. They complete you. you you've seen it, you've said it, you've heard it. You complete me because there's a hole. My interpretation of the whole is when you feel like you need a business person, the whole is telling you, go learn your freaking business. When you're not ready to do animation, go fill that hole by feeding yourself versus finding somebody. Because soon you'll realize that wasn't that hard. Why did I give all this up? Why am I making compromises all the time when I should have just learned how to fill my own hole? That's the important part. Okay, so they fulfill something that you don't do because those are the best, best kinds of partnerships. But it's usually for me a message to say you need to go to learn to do that. Okay, you share financial burden, but you need to be clear that you're equally committed to the financial burden and that you both have the resources. See, if you have more money than the other person and it's going south and it will go south at some point, you're contributing more money than the other person because they can't. So when money comes in, you're like, well, you need to survive. You need to eat. Are you married? Okay. Let's pretend like you're married. Your partner's going to come in and what about us? Now you got a third partner in that relationship. You see what I'm saying? 
it gets really, really tough. So every once in a while, Ben and Jerry meet. They even hate each other now. Do you know that? The Ben and Jerry ice cream story? They can't even talk to each other anymore. You know, Simon and Garfunkel, like, just go down the list. It works for a while, but I think it's just, it's a timeline. How much time do you want to buy? So the word of warning I would give you is this. When you join up with somebody to form a partnership, have your prenup. What do you get? What do I get? Because when this goes south, I want to be whole with you because I would still like to remain friends. There's another con there. You guys are swimming. Everything's great, right? Just like a lot of things. Once the relationship goes from platonic to intimate, like it's for whatever reason, you can't go back. People tend not to talk to their former partners. So I personally like to separate my personal relationships from my professional relationships because I can walk away from the professional ones. The personal ones, you can never escape them.